Hello everyone, this is my second video about the MDF Rose Engine Lathe. Today I'm going to cover the paper chuck. A lot of what I talk about on these videos is on my website, the Ornamental Turning Book of Knowledge. A link to that is in the comments. Many of you may know what a chuck is. You can see one here. This is a typical four-way self-centering chuck that's useful in a lot of wood turning. Um, it's significantly easier to use than a metal lace four jaw chuck which has independently adjusted jaws and that's great but the self-centering chuck is also less flexible for example you can't hold something off center very easily and that's why the metal lathe chuck is used when you have to do something along those lines in ornamental turning there are a whole host of chucks which are used to hold stuff in interesting manners but that's a topic for later videos today we're going to talk about paper chucks the purpose for a paper chuck is to get an idea about how the object you're planning to make is going to look. It won't show the 3D effects, but it does do a great job of giving you a good idea of the interaction between multiple cuts. I have two paper chucks. The body of this one that you see here is made from a piece of MDF. It doesn't have to be per perfectly balanced. Uh, remember, it's only going to turn about 10 to 15 RPM. You can even run slower if you wish. It was built to hold a 4x6 index card. These cards are good for documenting what you did, especially if you ever want to go back and do it the same way again. But they are not a good quality archival paper by any means. The two screws that you see at the top and the bottom of this are used to hold the paper down in the screws. And then it's held in the Nova Chuck. So let me show you what that looks like. I just completed this one yesterday. It's made from a piece of 16 gauge steel that is screwed to a hub made from aluminum or as the Brits would call it aluminium. You can see the hub here on the back. That uh, one inch eight thread is a pain to tap by hand I can tell you. But it works well. The advantage this one has over the other one is that the magnets that hold this piece down can be allow me to move the paper around and I can do uh, different effects from different setups and that's something that I'm going to be used in a later video on the amplitude adjuster so just keep that in mind each chuck uses the same pin holder this is simply a piece of pine that I cut to fit into the tool holder and it's drilled to accommodate the pin there's a spring at the bottom that pushes the pin forward you can see it here And that spring just helps to maintain the constant contact with the paper without being too much pressure as if you had too much pressure that would only damage the pin. Some people prefer to use a pencil instead of a pen. That's a preference thing that you may choose one way or the other. It, it doesn't affect how this works. Making your own parts is a theme you're going to hear often in this community. You can certainly buy everything and there are a couple of great sources for a complete lathe with everything you can imagine and a whole lot that you can't. But for those without unlimited funds and you know those wanting to retire before they're too old to enjoy this I can tell you that making my own parts is necessary this is a sign 24 rosette for this video that's what we're going to be using there are 24 lobes around the edges here and they're cutting a sine wave one of the great innovations that John McGill did was to add these holes for phasing and we're going to use that in this video to uh, talk about what the effects are of phasing. Let me get everything set up and then let's see what it looks like. Okay I'm set up for about a one inch diameter. I'm going to run this in reverse so you can see the waveform develop as we go through the complete diameter. All 
All right, let's move it out and see what we get. That's a much more pleasing curve. And finally, let's try this really small diameter. Okay, there you have it, three different diameters. It's all the same shape, but it just gets a little bit different look because the different uh, diameters give it uh, less or more uh, bumpiness, as it were. So now we're gonna try phasing, so let me get it set up for that. Okay, let's get a base curve and then we'll phase against that. Okay, I've rotated the spindle seven and a half degrees relative to the rosette, so let's see what we get. Rather looks like a spirograph, doesn't it? Well, that's quite a bit about a paper chuck, but I hope you see two things. One, how useful these things can be, and two, how easy it really is to make one and have it around. So, thank you for watching. 